HDFS fault tolerance. Hadoop file system is comprised of several components. These components are connected to each other through links. It is very much possible that one of the components or the link connecting two components might fail during the operation. Software does not stop working during such failures. HDFS is designed in a way so that it can tolerate faults and failures as well as save the data. In this section, we will understand how HDFS fault tolerance was introduced with respect to Hadoop 1.0 and then proceed towards fault tolerance in Hadoop 2.x. But first, let's define types of faults in HDFS. Types of faults in HDFS. Usually, three types of faults are recorded in HDFS. Data not failure, rack failure, name not failure, data not failure. Data is distributed among data nodes in such a way that same data is assigned to multiple data nodes. These copies are called replicas. If a data node fails, name node finds another data node with a replica to process the assigned task, rack failure. In Hadoop deployment, we had learned that data nodes in a cluster are arranged in form of racks, and these racks are connected to each other through switches. If one of the switches fail, all the data nodes in the rack associated with the switch get isolated. In such a case, name node finds other data nodes with a replica. The data node failure and rack failure handling is same in Hadoop 1.0 and Hadoop 2.x. However, the name node failure handling is different. As name node has complete information about Hadoop cluster, it becomes crucial to handle name node fault. What do we lose in case of a name node failure? all the details of data nodes and the storage available with it. All the details about replicas generated and stored in an individual data node. And all the details about active clients interacting with data nodes. We lose all three of these. Imagine if name node fails due to any reason, the system will be down instantly without any clue. So now we talk in detail about the name node failure handling in Hadoop 1.0 and 2.x. handling name node failure in Hadoop 1.0. To avoid losing data during name node failure, we need to set up a backup node. As we have discussed in the previous session, there is a backup node available that periodically takes updates from the name node. By doing so, the backup node maintains a copy of HDFS with it. So when the name node fails, the backup node takes over its duties to continue servicing client requests without significant interruption. The backup node takes over within one tenth of a second because it has the latest state available in the memory, both the latest edit log entries and an up-to-date block mapping. But this takeover is not instantaneous, so it is called as cold failover. In HDFS jargon, the takeover is called failover. To make the failover more fast, Few architectural changes are suggested in Hadoop 2.x. What are the architectural changes required to allow more realistic failover? The Hadoop 2.x allows a Hadoop cluster to have two name nodes. One of them will act as an active name node, or ANN, and the other will act as passive. The passive name node is known as standby name node or SNN. Apart from these, there is a separate secondary name node available which periodically takes updates from ANN. Data nodes must send block reports to both ANN and SNN because the block mappings are stored in a name node's memory and not on disk. When the ANN is working, the SNN would just act as a silent node recording the updates. The name nodes must use highly available shared storage to share the edit log. When a standby name node takes over, it reads up to the end of the shared edit log to synchronize its state with the active name node, and then continues to read entries as they are written by the active name node. Clients must be configured such that, in case of failure of ANN, client can automatically be able to contact SNN. 